Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions, Mike Check Movie Review. I still have to work on that tongue tie thing so I don't get spotted up and whatnot. And I do have a couple more movie reviews coming your way. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the content that I've released so far. I have a movie review out for The Grudge 2020, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and the film called 8mm. I also have a mashup that got put up a few days ago as well. Hopefully it doesn't get taken down because of copyright, even though I pretty much try to cover my uh, bases when it came to the copyright and whatnot, but fingers crossed, hopefully it can stay up there. But uh, today, I have a movie review of a film that uh, I did grow up watching uh, quite a bit. Uh, the sequel to it, I did hate for a while until my recent revisit of it. And it's also another Joel Schumacher film, but uh, here are my thoughts on uh, Batman Forever. It's kind of a film that I don't go too hard on, even if it was really corny and it did get a lot of hate towards it when it first came out back in 1995, the year that I was born. Uh, but I still enjoy it for the most part, even though this is where the corniness kind of started for the Batman films before Batman and Robin came out and then there wasn't a Batman film for pretty much almost 10 years. But um, I do have a good time watching Batman Forever. Uh, like I said, it's not the best. I do prefer Batman and Batman Returns over Batman Forever as well as the Dark Knight Trilogy over this film as well, but for what they gave us for a Batman film, it actually wasn't that bad. You had Val Kilmer as Batman, I honestly thought he did a really great job. Uh, you had Chris O'Donnell being introduced as Robin. Um, the only issue I have with this is there's only like maybe a 10 year difference between the actors Chris O'Donnell and Val Kilmer. But again, that's just me nitpicking. Uh, for the parts they played, they did a pretty decent job. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones is Two-Face, I mean, he is a pretty good serious actor, but when it came to him playing a more of a corny, goofy, uh, laughable uh, Two-Face, it was a little jarring at first, uh, looking back at it now, I think when I first watched it a few years back for the first time, so that was like maybe five, it's a little jarring, but uh, it still turned out Okay, he did a decent performance. He did pass off as like a, a maniac. Uh, and then you had, uh, I can't remember her name. Um, I, can't remember, I can't remember her character name, but Nicole Kim was in the film as well. Uh, she was a doctor. I think it was Chase Meridian. Um, and then there was the, probably the, one of the more, I kind of regret saying this, but the more enjoyable parts of the movie, Jim Carrey as the Riddler. Uh, he would make a really good, like, 1960s Joker, I would say, but I guess for what he did in The Riddler, he still did pass off as, like, a lunatic maniac, uh, but, uh, it was still really corny. I do get the message of this one a little bit more. The director, Joel Schumacher, was trying to aim from towards, he was, try, he was trying to aim towards more kids in this movie, since the Batman Returns was a little too dark, and Warner Brothers wanted a more kid-friendly kind of movie, so that's what they did. And yeah, there is still some like dark humor for like older people to get. Like there is one scene in there that I have on my Instagram account that Alfred said to uh, Dick Grayson or Robin in the movie that kind of caught me off guard that I thought was the funniest thing that he, uh, Alfred has said in this entire like movie. But again, when I was younger, I never noticed that because I never really paid attention. All I cared about was Batman. Again. I am a Jim Carrey fan. I can never get tired of like watching Jim Carrey be a complete idiot, like being really hilarious and very comedic and whatnot. I will say the uh, chemistry between Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones, uh, it was all right. I mean, it was pretty good chemistry, but you can tell in some scenes that Tommy Lee was just tired of Jim Carrey's shit. I mean, I don't know too much about the backstory. I just know that Tommy Lee hated working with Jim Carrey and I think he wanted to kill him a couple times. <laughs> I mean, if I was stuck in a room with a hyperactive guy like that for like weeks on end, I would probably lose my mind as well. Tommy Lee did stay professional throughout the movie, which I'm very proud that he did. I mean, of course he's going to because he, he wants to get that paycheck. 
and he did a really good job dealing with a guy like Jim Carrey and also worked really well with Val Kilmer and I would say Chris O'Donnell. Um, there really isn't much to say like storyline wise about this movie other than uh, you get the introduction of Two-Face, you get the introduction of Riddler, uh, they team up. Riddler's plan is to use some weird hourglass device he calls the box, even though it's an hourglass, but he calls it a box to put on top of everyone's TVs as like a mind controller device, and he sucks all of the knowledge and every little secret about that per said person or anyone that owns it and gets it sent to his brain through his base sized hourglass which again thinking about that now that's a little over the top and what the fuck <laughs> but yeah again they were shooting for more towards kids and whatnot even though there was some dark humor in there because you gotta throw some dark humor in there when it comes to kid shows you know speaking of uh dark humor and like adult jokes i mean my god the amount of like sexual uh I wouldn't say conflict, but like sexual interactions between Chase Meridian and Bruce Wayne slash Batman was, I felt like was a little over the top in some parts, and like, it's kind of cringy, but at the same time, it's, it is what it is. It's the 1990s, that's the kind of stuff people laughed at, or people hated since this had like mixed reviews and whatnot, since this is not what people wanted. But again, going back at it now, it probably has a better following now than it did back in 1995, as so did Batman and Robin, because it has a weird cult following behind it as well, which I explained already in a uh, review previously, or more like a revisit. Another thing that this movie kind of like goes over is that Bruce Wayne is going through like mental trauma about his parents being killed by the Joker in the older film, which they didn't really state that the Joker did it in this movie, but since it's a part of the same universe. People already know that in this movie universe it was the Joker that killed his parents and whatnot. And it also kind of ties into Two-Face killing uh, Dick Grayson's parents at the circus incident and Bruce Wayne trying to teach him to not go on a revenge, vengeance, killing spree to get back at Two-Face to avenge his parents' death while also dealing with his own mental trauma. And that just sounds like a giant situation of excessive baggage, <laughs> I would say. But, I mean, they had to go through something with the protagonist going through some uh, issues besides fighting the villains and whatnot. I wouldn't say the film gets very hard to watch at this point, but it kind of starts turning more into Batman and robin -y at the end with the final confrontation, also at the very end of the Batcave explosion, which the Riddler and Two-Face do break into uh, Wayne Manor because they figured out who Batman's identity is. And they kidnap Chase Meridian, knock Bruce Wayne unconscious by grazing his head with a bullet because Two-Face has an issue of shooting people by flipping a coin. Everyone knows that. I mean, I know that, but this movie does it weird, kind of. And Riddler destroys the Batcave. And as he leaves the Batcave, he yells, Joygasm. That is something Jim Carrey would yell if he had a really good day and had six cups of coffee. Not what the Riddler would say. I kind of feel like that when it came to shooting those last few scenes, which however order they did it, the last few scenes from the explosion of the Batcave all the way to the end of the movie, I feel like the filmmakers pretty much told Jim Carrey to stay off his meds and just let loose. <laughs> I'm not saying Jim Carrey has to be on meds for his personality and his quirks and whatnot, but it seems like the kind of thing where we tell a person who is on like ADHD medication to not take it that day and just say whatever comes to mind and that's why the words joygasm kind of just pops out at random because not every normal person yells joygasm unless they're trying to be funny. I mean, I say, I mean, I've said it a couple times here and there just to kind of make fun of the movie or try to be funny, but I don't say it 
all the time. In fact, I think the most I've said that word is in this review alone. <laughs> the last time I've said it was probably a few weeks ago because I actually watched this film a couple weeks ago with my parents and my mom and I were sitting there quoting the film like over and over and over again and it's just, it's... Her and I have seen this movie quite a bit and it's hilarious kind of going back and just referencing everything in the movie and whatnot. Uh, I would say one cool thing about this uh, movie is they had a pretty, I guess, cool McDonald's commercial. I'd have to find it and post it in the description below, the link towards it. And because I think that was back when McDonald's actually sold good stuff instead of just crappy toys. They kind of stopped doing that in like mid-2005. But uh, it actually, they actually sold like this four cup, like four glass cup set of like each character on each cup and whatnot. And I think my mom has a set and I actually have my own personal set as well, which is, it's actually pretty good. Obviously Val Kilmer does not return as Batman in the next film, which that is also kind of like a two sides of the coin argument where Schumacher says one thing, Kilmer says another thing, but I kind of wish Kilmer did come back and Batman and Robin, it probably would have made it a little bit more watchable, I would say. I mean, nothing against George Clooney, but he didn't do that good, but then again, he didn't want to do the movie, especially after seeing the script. But again, I'm talking about uh, Batman and Robin. I'm trying to talk about Batman forever. Definitely a different change of scenery when it came to like the city being, how the city was made in Batman and Batman Returns. More of like a dark, gothic-like look to it. Kind of creepy, but looked kind of cool. It actually fit Batman. And then all of a sudden, you just get this giant shift to like neon green colors and towering skyscrapers covered in neon and all these weird looking statues that are like uh, Olympian kind and whatnot. And not many people really talk about it, but this movie is kind of the introduction of bat nipples. It's just, it's not that noticeable in this movie yet. I would say I've noticed it enough times, because I've seen this movie enough times, but this movie is the introduction to the bat nipples. Uh, it's also kind of the introduction of the bat suit where he has everything attached to him. Uh, they don't show the ice skates, but he has all the gadgets he needs that are just magically attached to the suit because magic and he's Batman. I would say I kind of like Robin's outfit in this movie a lot better than I did in Batman and Robin. I kind of wish they would have stuck with it, but I mean, I don't know why they changed his outfit, but they left Batman's outfit pretty much the same in the second film. Oh, I recently found out from a recent article that um, after Joel Schumacher's passing, there is uh, rumors going around that there is a 175 minute longer cut of this movie. I'm not sure if it's like completely edited or if it's just like scenes cut together and with no like actual like sound bits put there. It's just random clips added onto it. Uh, I kind of, I'm not really pushing for it, but I kind of hope that it does get released because it would be interesting kind of seeing the full vision that Schumacher had for this movie and kind of see like what he really had planned for it so that, I mean, I'm not saying this movie feels incomplete. I mean, it's complete as it is, but just if it had more scenes in there, it'd be kind of cool to see like the added on like Easter eggs or added on bonus clips that he had in mind put in there to make an extended cut. Rating wise, huh. To compare it to every other Batman film that I have seen, I've seen the four of this uh, anthology, I've seen the Dark Knight trilogy, I've seen Batman vs. Superman, and I've seen Justice League. Uh, we're not gonna talk about Justice League, we're not gonna talk about Batman vs. Superman, those ones don't count. Uh, if we're talking about the seven films in general, this one is definitely not the best. I would probably put this second to last out of these films. Not that I mean, not that I actually hate this movie. It's just when it comes to like quality and actually being a Batman film, this one is more uh, a cartoony, goofy, kid-friendly Batman film than say The Dark Knight or The Dark Knight Rises or hell, Batman and Batman Returns. But um, on a entertainment scale. I find it entertaining, it's a good laugh. Uh, I can definitely watch it more times than I can watch Batman and Robin. But yeah, I can also get a little overwhelmed 
watching this film, if I were to watch it more than once, I actually watched it, I think, twice in like within two weeks. I don't know how I pulled through that. Uh, I am stalling on the rating, I apologize. I am going to give it a, honestly, the number I'm pulling out of my head is 6.5. Again, that is a failing grade when it comes to movies, but I still find it somewhat entertaining. Sometimes just a popcorn movie just to watch here and there if I'm killing time. But it's not terrible. To me, a bad movie has got to be like, uh, I would say like 5.9 or lower, and I know my rating scale is a little little fucky, but 5.9 or lower is like a bad movie to me, and this movie barely gets by, still calling it like a, a, a decent, okay movie to watch if you want to kill time. If you're a Batman fan, though, it's not a movie for you, I would say that. I am saying this even though I'm a Batman fan, but I know there are more die-hard Batman fans than me out there, and they hate this film to the core, probably. But, simple, just a simple superhero fan, I mean, I'd give it a whole, if you've never seen Batman Forever, I'd say at least give it one chance. Give it one chance, understanding that you're going into a giant, goofy, cartoony world of just kid goofiness, and a lot of comedy and you're gonna have a good time if you know those things and you can not mind that overall I would say my favorite part of this film is Jim Carrey <laughs> because I am a sucker for Jim Carrey and I do like a lot of his work I do want to review more of his movies though but that is besides the point anyways this has been another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review by yours truly Mike Check 95 and next time you'll see me, I'll have a couple, I actually do have a couple more reviews coming out. Uh, I will say that my next review that I have is kind of like a revisit review. I reviewed it back in March, I think, or April. But I gave it, like, I did not do a good job reviewing it. I kind of just said my part and then ended it in under, like, two minutes. So I kind of want to go back and rediscuss that movie. I guess I might have to sit back and watch it again, which I might do after recording this. But uh, next review is going to be a revisit review of Friday the 13th Part 2. I did say I was going to go through that entire series, and I never got done with it. I just got through the first two and then stopped. So my review for Friday the 13th Part 1 is out there. It is a ways down if you like scroll down and whatnot, but it is there. And there is the Friday the 13th Part 2 review that's only like two and a half minutes long. I severely apologize for that really shitty review. I'm probably just going to leave it up because I'm probably just going to be too lazy to take it down. But I will revisit that film hopefully in the next couple days, get that up, and hopefully I'll give a better, enjoyable review. But until then, this has been Mike Check 95 signing out.